Hi, my name's Willy. I'm going to be looking back at each class in vanilla and answering a very simple question. Was it any good though? Today we have the Warlock. Here's the points I'm going to be looking at. The leveling experience, how good they were at it and how fast they could level. The class quests, what were they for and how well they fit. PvE, dungeon and raid performance. PvP, open world or battlegrounds. And tier sets, the effects they had as well as the looks. I'm just gonna say it, I've saved the best for last and okay I may be exaggerating a little bit here but I'm not going to give any bias in this review. Warlock is the class for me and what I'll be playing come classic launch. Warlocks brought many unique and cool things to the game that were invaluable in a group. So let's get straight into this and see what lurks in the shadows. Let me tell you we are off to a good start. Warlocks are the second class to have a pet along with hunters and your go-to leveling pet will be the Voidwalker learned from a quest at level 10. The Voidwalker is more focused on reducing damage and keeping threat as opposed to the DPS machine cats that hunters have access to. And it goes without saying that if an enemy isn't hitting the Warlock directly, you're free to dot them up and manage your mana to keep moving forwards. Warlocks are a class that can quite easily handle multiple mobs at the same time, with their pet, damage over time effects and main form of crowd control, fear. Uniquely, Warlocks should take full advantage of their ability to turn health into mana through life tap and then regenerating while start of combat or just through drain life. This keeps you going and casting whereas anyone else would have to stop and drink. The go-to leveling spec is a mix between Affliction to boost the power of your damage over time effects and Demonology to strengthen your Voidwalker. Honestly, you can level as whatever you want at the end of the day, you're chilling at the back while your Voidwalker is taking care of the aggro, which it does very well. In addition to the easy leveling thanks to their toolkit, Warlocks get a free mount at level 40. They can also give a target water breathing without even needing materials to do it. And of course, let's not forget Healthstone and Soulstone that provided big safety nets to any possible mistakes. On the subject of stones, let's talk about soul shards. They were very different in vanilla. You gain one soul shard from defeating an enemy that gives experience whilst casting drained soul. The warlock did not have to get the killing blow, just be casting drained soul. Soul shards were actual physical items that went in your bag as you gained them and were used for many spells such as summoning demons, health stones, fire stones, soul stones, etc. Warlocks could get a special soul shard bag, just like hunters had bags for their ammo that shards would automatically go into as you gain them, and we'll talk more about soul shards later. Just a quick note on the improved drain soul talent, the bonus mana regen isn't super necessary, it can be skipped. Also if you drain soul every mob you come across you will need a macro to delete the soul shards as you get them or they'll just end up filling up your bag and you'll have to manually delete them. Having a few spare shards at all times can be pretty useful though, especially on PvP servers. If you're newer to the Warlock, I would still take this talent, it makes up for the learning curve leveling and helps you serve mana easier. Finally, don't forget to buy Grimoires for your Voidwalker or just all your demons really as you level up, otherwise it'll have trouble maintaining aggro and of course just like any other caster, if the enemy is low, don't refresh dots, it's a waste of mana, drain soul or wand it down. Warlock was only surpassed by Hunter in leveling speed, but it is very capable, albeit slightly more complicated to play efficiently. Warlocks have a lot of quests, in fact they have the most out of any class. The depth that Blizzard added to Warlock through the class quest system really shows and makes the class feel even better to play. The main class quest progression for the Warlock comes through learning different summons, the first of which is the Imp. Next up at level 10 is the Voidwalker, and this is honestly the most important class quest overall. The Voidwalker will be your best friend leveling, and you shouldn't delay this quest. Following this at level 20 is a quest for the Succubus. This summon puts out some decent damage and has Seduce, which can be very useful in PvE and PvP. 
However, it's exceptionally fragile and pets had no resistance to AoE attacks in vanilla, so it could go down very easily. Next demon at level 30 is the Fell Hunter. This is the go-to PvP pet most of the time, a real nightmare against other casters and it had decent resistances, an interrupt ability and the ability to remove magical effects. This pet gave Warlock the edge against many other ranged classes. At level 50 you learn to bind an infernal which are temporary summons, initially you can control them for 5 minutes as part of a cast then they break free and start rampaging and you have to recast enslaved demon to get them back under control. This fits in very nicely with the whole power to cost theme the warlock is all about. Also you can do some rather questionable things with a rampaging infernal which are definitely not abusable. And finally you can get it as a drop from the scar shield warlocks which whilst it is easier than doing the class quest the quest is pretty cool. And the final summon at level 60 is the Doom Guard, the big daddy of demons. The quest involves creating a prison for the Doom Guard and then binding it. This teaches you Ritual of Doom, which needs you and a bunch of other people to summon the Doom Guard forth, and then you must enslave it. This will also sacrifice one of the people who have cast the ritual. Needing a full party really adds weight to the idea that this demon is close to the limits of your power as a warlock. This also required Dire Maw to complete. And despite it being powerful, it tended not to be used in dungeon or raids. Really, it could just break free from enslaved demon at any time and start causing havoc. This is also obtainable through a drop through Dreadlords in the Blasted Lands, but it was quite a bit rarer. This all sounds pretty awesome so far, but wait, there's more. There's actually a lot more still. You have multiple quests that reward items throughout your journey to 60. I'm just going to pick out the Enchanted Gold Blood Robe at level 37, a very nice amount of stamina and intellect on, and the Trolls of a Feather at level 52, and show you some of the good rewards that are worth going for, especially the Trinket. Finally, Warlocks get mounts too, right? Yes, they do. The Fell Steed is learned at level 40 through a simple handing quest. Absolutely get this as soon as you're level 40. Mobility is one of the Warlocks' weaknesses. Warlocks get an epic quest once they get level 60 to earn the Dread Steed. This has you going about Azeroth, collecting items, dealing with dodgy characters, and overall doing Warlocky things. The final stage for the Dread Steed takes place in Diamore, so it won't be available until Phase 2 is released. So you may end up paying the regular fee for the level 60 mount, even when you can get it as part of this quest. That's just the price of power, I suppose. Warlock class quests were the most numerous, in-depth, and created the best feel for your class and were my personal favourite series in the game. Attempts not to be biased don't seem to be going very well so far, but honestly, this is just all a fair assessment though. Warlocks had a lot of things going right for them. So let's talk PvE now. Well, this is the first point where I actually have some negatives, sort of, for the Warlock. You know about the debuff limit for bosses, right? Any enemy in WoW can have a maximum of 16 debuffs applied at one time. For a class whose damage revolves around damage over time effects, this is a bit of a problem. You know what else was an issue? Warlocks gained exactly 0% hit from their talents for their destruction spells. Blizzard were kind enough to give us some hit on our affliction spells, but in Rage you're only ever going to be frequently applying corruption to a boss, and that's if you're lucky. The majority of a warlock's damage and raid environments came from Shadow Bolt, and there was just not enough well itemized gear that would boost the warlock's damage, provide enough hit to reach cap, that they so desperately needed. This unfortunately meant that warlocks started out raiding in Molten Core and Blackwing Lur as rather weak damage dealers. But this didn't mean you don't bring warlock, oh no not at all, you absolutely still wanted them in your raid. You wanted at least 3 warlocks for 3 big reasons, Curse of Elements, Curse of Shadows, and Curse of Recklessness. These were really mandatory debuff. You can bring 40 people to a raid, you should have these covered. If you are using a pet, Imp was generally the go-to, giving Blood Pact and Fire Shield, both very nice for the tank party. Warlocks also provided unique benefits. Health Stones for the tank, Soul Stones to bring allies back, and summoning people directly to the instance. Keep in mind that each of these actions required a soul shard. Warlocks were fully expected to farm out 20 or 30 or so soul shards before each raid. That's defeating 20 to 30 enemies that gave experience before each raid. Yeah. Make no mistake, everyone had some farming to do in classic before raids, but Warlocks had this little extra thing to do. And a quick note on dungeons, Warlocks were great for the same reasons, also they could actually take full advantage of their damage over time effects, making them great against several targets. They brought two important crowd control spells in Seduce for Humanoids and Banish for Elementals or Demons. Once again, summoning is super useful. Someone has to repair, summon them back. Forgot items from your bank, summon them back. Need to pick up a quest? Summon them back. The list goes on. You will definitely make friends running dungeons frequently as a warlock. 
Damage wise, locks were mid tier for ranged early on. Let's have a look at an early raiding warlock spec. The most popular will be the demonic sacrifice ruin spec. As mentioned earlier, damage over time effects aren't really a thing in raids. This spec uses demonic sacrifice on your succubus to increase your shadow damage by 15% combined with Ruin to boost your critical strike damage by 100% to put out some nice damage via Shadow Bolt spam. And fun fact, since Life Tap does shadow damage to you, you gain additional mana back when using this spec. And of course, unlike so many other classes, mana is never an issue for Warlocks. Since Classic is releasing with 16 debuff slots, there will be some Warlocks allowed to use Corruption as a dot since it scaled the best. This opened up a new talent build. Even though we talent improved Curse of Agony and Siphon Life, only corruption was used on bosses. This was for two reasons. One, it scale best, and two, it procced Nightfall, allowing for more Shadow Bolt action. This spec was simple enough to play as well. Dot anything that moves and press Shadow Bolt. Job done. So, Warlocks start off fairly weak until Zulgarub drops. This is when the Bloodvine set is released and Warlock's cry for hit gear is finally answered. It's at this point Warlock is really able to start putting out some good damage. Nothing changes about the raiding specialization used, it's simply that your spells are landing far more often. By next Ramus, Warlocks have moved from a middle of a pack class you bring mainly for the utility and debuffs, to strong contenders for top range damage along with the mages. A final note for Warlocks in AQ40, where they have a unique role in tanking one of the bosses, as no target could get in melee range without taking massive damage. Warlocks could do this through spamming Searing Pain, which generated bonus threat, and applying Curse of Doom, which did a large amount of damage and threat after one minute. Warlocks had a weak start into an amazing endgame, and they're very much always wanted in PvE. Their debuffs and benefits like stones and summons made them a great asset to any group. Okay, PvP time! Similar to PvE here, Warlocks weren't the best early but scaled up very well. The Warlocks' biggest strength was being hard to kill whilst dotting everyone up and keeping their target in CC. The main way this was done was through the Soul Link spec. This talent tree offered so many upgrades to your survivability, whilst damage output was through dots and the occasional Nightfall proc. Demonic Embrace boosted up your health a good bit, improved healthstones gave extra heals, Master Demonologist gave a range of buffs depending on your demon, Voidwalker being best versus physical damage, Bellhunter versus casters. Improved Voidwalker made its sacrifice spell even more powerful, and you could summon another Voidwalker on a 0.5 second cast thanks to Fell Domination. And finally, Soul Link, a straight up 30% damage reduction. Add health potions, engineering, and a soul stone on top of this, and you have a pretty scary fight on your hands. Your main threat was getting taken out before you had the chance to react by a rogue getting a good opener on you or letting a warrior charge you. But with these various defences though, Warlocks had good tools to go the distance versus any class. The Soul Link spec is more for world PvP and whilst its survivability is great, its damage really isn't. In Battlegrounds, Burst is king and Warlocks could certainly spec for Burst. Going deep into the Destruction Tree allowed you to pick up Ruin and Shadowburn. These talents could really let your spells pack a serious punch. The Warlock PvP talents are very flexible as well, and they can come down to preference. There are talents which all feel mandatory and make for some difficult choices such as Improved Life Tap and Fell Domination. It was also a good all around spec for PvE and PvP. This is the Shadow Mastery Ruin build and will likely be the go to for group PvP. Dot everyone up, proc some big instant cast Shadow Bolts, and as Warlocks gear up their damage becomes even better and Demonic Embrace makes them surprisingly tanky. Overall Warlocks are solid at all aspects of PvP and given equal gear have a good chance to beat any class in a 1v1. And don't forget Death Coil as the emergency melee peel button. This one spell will save your life many times for sure. So let's check out some Warlock tier sets now. Tier 1, the Fellheart Raiment from Molten Core. Pretty good look about it and had some interesting set bonuses. Well, for PvP at least, I guess. Even the 8 set mana reduction wasn't a huge deal in PvE, it'll save you a few life taps but that's it. In PvP, Extra Drain is pretty helpful against both melee classes and casters. The 5 set was actually really good for PvP and made your pet a lot more durable. A Warlock spec into Master Demonologist, Fellhunter, wearing the 5 set would have 160 resistances to all schools of magic, which made it seriously annoying against other casters. Tier 2, the Nemesis Raiment looked even better in my opinion, and the set bonuses really build on tier tier 1, offering even more resistances for your pet, reducing the chance for magical AoE to take it down. The A set was interesting as Warlocks had no way to reduce threat by themselves, and also had a strong crit multiplier through the Ruin talent, meaning threat could be an issue. 
It was a bigger deal for Horde, since Alliance classes had Blessing of Salvation though, whereas Horde only had Tranquil Air Totem. Finally, Tier 3, the Plague Heart set, also looks great. It gives a sort of Plague Doctor vibe going on, pretty fitting for Max Ramus. This tier set is a little more exciting, especially the bonus damage on Corruption. Then again, maybe only one or two locks will be taking advantage of this in raids due to the debuff limit. Threat reduction is welcome one again, and the 8 set is kind of meh. It's a bit of a theme for Warlocks that their tier isn't overall too good, and many of the best items are not from tier gear. This is largely due to the fact that Warlocks needed hit really badly, and tier gear often didn't have any on. So, the Warlock. Was it any good though? Warlocks were top tier in all aspects of the game, overall an exceptionally good class. Fast leveling, self-sufficient, tanky pet, scales well, good in PvP, lots of talent options, unique utility, they were very well rounded and a valuable addition to any group in PvE or PvP. The largest issue is their weak start in the raiding scene and saying that they still had it better than many other classes, hardly bottom of the pack. Warlock is going to be my choice in Classic, and I can't wait to get started. And this also brings me to the end of this series. It's been so interesting to produce. I've learned a massive amount about every class, and hopefully some of this stuff sticks in my head. I've done my best to include everything that makes each class interesting along the way, but there is so much depth to each class that I've no doubt missed a few things along the way. This is just testament to how expansive each class really is and I have many more ideas for classic content to come, so stay tuned for more. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.